What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I cleaned and cooked this uh, stingray. I've never cooked a stingray before, so this is something that was new to me. I was kind of going off what I already knew as far as cooking other fish and a couple YouTube videos. So this is a new thing completely to me. It honestly didn't turn out half bad, but the process to get it that way was pretty long. And you probably don't have to go through all this, but I'm not a huge fan of really fishy like really fishy tasting fish. I'm just not a huge fan of that. So I went through a bunch of steps so I could like pull out that fishy taste and all that stuff. So we're just gonna jump right into it and I'll show you guys exactly what I did. So first things first is I rinsed off each separate filet and stingrays, they're kind of weird because they have a top filet and a bottom filet. And it's just, it's different. And each stingray had two different types of meat. Or I should say, the Kaunos in the Southern had different types of meat, like color. The one was way darker than the other, and it ended up being a little tougher as well. But first things first, I'm just rinsing off all these guys. And right here, I'm rinsing them once again. Like as you can see all those bubbles, that's from all the slime that was in these guys. And I mean, after I saw that, I just had to keep washing them. And like I said, it's probably not a huge deal. You probably can get away without doing it, but I'm just not a fan of that. And here we go, I just got this little salt shaker. I cut the top off. It's kind of rednecky, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna soak these guys in salt water for a couple days, or I shouldn't say a couple days, a day, to try to pull out some of the blood and slime from these fillets. And it's just, it's just different, you know? It's different than any other fish. But here you go, look at all the blood that this pulled out. And that was all just in those fillets. And like just at first glance, it looked pretty clean, you know, a nice like white color, but as you can see, it pulled a lot of blood. So now we're just draining out that dirty water. And you're left with these fillets right here. But once again, me being the way I was, I went back and did it again. And a lot of these bubbles are still from the slime, but a lot of the salt reacting with it, you know. So that's not all dirty water necessarily, but I still just wanted to go back and do another, I guess, round of salt. Just getting them all good. Before I uh, filled it up too high with water this time, I wanted to make sure each filet had a little bit of salt on it. So I went back and just kind of separately mixed it all together so that each little piece could have like a little bit of salt on it. And like I said, this probably isn't necessary to go through all these steps, but I don't like the taste of fish. Just mixing it up, getting the water a little bit higher so that they're all covered. And then here's a day after that. Not nearly as much blood, but it still pulled out, you know, a fair bit of that stuff. Not quite as slimy as the last batch, so that made me a little happier. Just gotta drain that real quick. And then I'm converting them over into another dish here after rinsing off the excess salt. So that's kind of my idea is I didn't want the salt to be caked on there from before or completely ruin the taste of it. So essentially I just went back and rinsed off each separate filet so that, you know, still tasted someone like fish and you didn't get an overwhelming amount of salt. just I guess drying that filet off because that one was pretty soaked. You don't want them super soaked but then I started to think after this next step it wouldn't really matter. So what I ended up doing is adding some buttermilk and if you guys have never been around buttermilk it wasn't what I was expecting. It is a super super sour smelling milk. It is just not pleasant whatsoever and I mean it sticks to your hands like honestly I probably should have worn gloves for a lot of this stuff but I didn't really care. So I just poured on a bunch of milk, buttermilk, and mix it all in there. And like I said, at this point, I mean, it is just so sour. But I don't know exactly what the science is behind this, but for whatever reason, it like breaks down something in the fillets and yeah, all that. So once again, it's going back in the fridge. So at this point, I don't know if I've had you guys up to date, it's been two days of salt soaking 
two separate times, and then this was one night of the buttermilk. Now we're grabbing ourselves a strainer here. And we're just loading the fillets into the strainer. And we're gonna rinse them off because we don't want all that buttermilk left on them. Now that I've got them all, I guess, rinsed off, you wanna make sure that there's no just leftover water on them. But right here, you can see the tendons popping out and that's just because of all the salt and maybe the buttermilk has like tightened them up or something so they're all coming out really <clears throat> easily. So now I've got a nice sharp fillet knife and we're gonna be just chopping these guys up into little cubes. And look at those, those are the two separate fillets. I believe the whiter one is from the southern ray and then the uh, darker fillets from the uh, Kaunos. And the Kaunos are the ones that almost look like the manta rays, I guess, with the pointy wings. So yeah, you want a good sharp knife for this. It's not a super tough fish, you know, it's just, it takes a little bit of time. I mean, you can just see how big of a difference there is between the two stingrays. It's just crazy. And I hadn't really paid attention to it to this. Like, right here, you can see, like, the whiter pieces, which I believe is from the southern, looks more like a chicken. And the darker pieces literally look like a piece of steak. It is, it is so wild. There's definitely a lot of meat on these stingrays. I, I, I couldn't even tell you how many this was. Now here, I'm drying off each separate little piece. And if I could have went back and just did it another way, I probably wouldn't have dried off the big fillets because it's kind of like pointless. But it's probably just an extra precaution or whatever so that, you know, it ends up good. And so all I'm doing here is putting flour into this. And this is essentially just to dry off the uh, excess liquid. Because at this point, I mean, we've dried it, we've done everything else, but we have to uh, make sure there's no water left on it for when we fry it. Just shaking them up. They come out super coated. And I'm just kind of flaking off the built up clumps because those aren't really necessary. And look at all that. That is just a bunch of stingray meat. Why don't you put them into the fridge until you're ready to go. So all purpose flour. Well, I guess not. You guys can see all that. I went kind of fast. Seltzer, pepper, garlic, onion, baking powder, salt, all that. So we're almost doing like a beer battered uh, fish fry except minus the beer and adding the seltzer and this is something I hadn't really done before but when I was doing some research it just kind of looked like the way I wanted my fish cooked and I don't know it was a, and I don't know exactly if uh, this is what people do with stingrays but it's what I did I think it's more of like a flaky white fish type of thing but I just wanted to try it because it looked good but yes we're just mixing everything together Get it all just mixed evenly because you don't want clumps of this or that all over the place. So you're just getting it all mixed. You don't want any chunks. And this seltzer, I ended up using almost like the whole bottle. I uh, I was thinking uh, it wouldn't take that much, but it, it definitely did. And looking back on it, I almost would have went with a... Uh, I guess runnier batter so I would add even more than this like this looks almost like a pancake batter but I would have went with a little bit more in here doing some frying outside so we don't make a mess in the kitchen some basic canola oil
And here you can kind of see it's almost more like a gravy, which I mean, it's fine. Like it tasted fine. It's just I would have went with a little bit runnier of a, of a uh, mix. Now oil is nice and hot. Just gonna dump those pieces in there. And I have a hard time with cooking fish. I always overcook fish just because, again, it kind of freaks me out with like the sliminess. So I cooked them for probably a little longer than I should have, but overall, they didn't end up coming out too bad. They got decent color. They almost look like a, it's like a Chinese food. I think those chickens that you put the red sauce on, whatever that is, that's what these kind of look like. All right guys, so here we go. And so I fried up both of them. And the ones on the right, even though they're darker, that's actually the lighter meat, but since it went in later, it got a little crispier. But, anyways, those are the pieces right there. And right there, my camera cuts off. But, anyways, the Stingray was a really good thing. I'd probably rate the Southern probably like 8.8 .8 out of 10, and then the Kaunos, the darker meat, probably like a seven. Both were good, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, darker cow nose was definitely a tougher meat, even though I went through all that. And maybe I did something wrong, but it was just really tough. And we ended up sharing, you know, some of this meat with like my family and some friends, and they all were saying it's like a 10 out of 10. So maybe I'm just picky when it comes to that stuff, but it really honestly wasn't that bad. They just, like I said, I think most of those guys just, uh, like fried it in butter like they didn't bread it or anything like that so that's how they did it and they said it tasted fine all right guys so this is gonna be the end of today's video there wasn't a whole lot of action but it was just kind of another part of the trip you know you got to learn how to cook it clean it all that it's not just about the shooting part so this is kind of a different video you know we didn't show the whole shooting part of it because i didn't get a bunch of film of it but if you guys do want to see you know some more bow fishing stingray or just the cooking videos be sure to let me know and i'll try to do some more this is going to be all for today's video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.